I bet you didn't think that I'd be back. Well, what did I tell you? I said when I ended the Being Human with Vasavi podcast on December 16th, I said that I would be back. I just didn't know when. And I needed some time to really reflect and go inwards. So much has gone on since the last episode of the Being Human with Vasavi podcast, which aired on December 16th. I'm recording this on January 29th um, on a Saturday. And um, yeah, we are here. This is now the Say It Out Loud podcast. There are so many changes that have been going on. And the way that I wanted to structure today was to bring you back, was to reintroduce myself. Let me just say it. I wanted to reintroduce myself to you. Because if you're a new listener here to the Say It Out Loud podcast, or you're a loyal fan of the Being Human with Vasavi podcast, and you're back and you're super excited that the podcast is back. I want to say uh, your your feel good energy and your excitement is matched. I feel the same way. Um, and whether you're new or you've been here for a while, I want to keep you in the loop about changes that I've made in my personal life, in my business, um, in my on my in my creative side. I want to tell you all of it. And then moving forward after this episode, I will be having um, guests on the show. So. Guests and a mixture of guests and solo episodes. That's what I that's that's what I want to be doing. So a lot of what I'm creating is coming from a place of what I want to be doing rather than what I think I should be doing. So where do I where do I begin? Well, it's interesting because when I started the Being Human with Vasavi podcast, I started with my recovery journey and I started with letting you guys know what I'd been going through emotionally. And that was really like, I restarted the podcast. I was, I think a year sober at that point, a year and two months sober. And I said, I'm ready to restart the podcast. This was back in May of 20, um, 2020. And now it's um, January, 2022. So my relationship to recovery has changed. I don't drink, I uh, obviously don't, don't use hard drugs. I'm, I don't use cocaine, anything like that. Um, but I, um, I have been using cannabis to help me. And um, it's the only thing that I use. Um, and it's been about a month since I've been using cannabis. Um, so I, you know, smoke a joint. <laughs> like I microdose a little cannabis throughout the day. And that's really been helping with my, any like little, little, little anxiety left over, right? I, I, I move my body. I'm very kind to myself. I've gotten much kinder. Um, I've started to have really good boundaries. <laughs> Um, but I gotta tell you, what's really been helping is I'm super kind to myself and my creative spirit, which I'll be sharing with you coming up. Um, but yeah, I've been super gentle taking bubble baths. Never thought I'd be that girl that would take bubble baths, but I take bubble baths every day, sometimes in the morning. It's weird and it's wonderful and I love it. Um, but I started uh, using cannabis for Christmas. I went to um, Colorado and I wrote my manuscript. That's another thing you might not know. Is that I signed a book deal with New World Library. And my book, Say It Out Loud, will be coming out in spring of 2023. So it feels really cohesive and in alignment to have this podcast be the Say It Out Loud podcast as well. And I've been using cannabis um, and it's been really just, I feel so good in my body. I feel warm. I feel fuzzy. I feel comfortable. Um, I, I use it with a lot of intention. So when I, when I use cannabis, I turn inwards, I set an intention and I say, what do I want to really kind of explore today? And so that leads me to my next thing, right? Which is allowing yourself to recreate your identity, what feels constricting and what doesn't. Um, I don't feel constricted by the fact that I don't use cocaine and alcohol. I have zero desire to drink. I have zero desire to ugh, ever go back down there for me. Right. Um, but I really enjoy getting a little stoned, you know, microdosing and um, feeling really good. It's like really gotten me into my body. And that feels really, really good for me. And it's just allowing myself to um, give myself what I need and not judging myself. Right. And I trusting myself, knowing that I have limits. Right. Rather than being like, oh, if I do this, I'm going to fall off the wagon, like such extreme thinking. And it's such it's rooted in lack of self-trust. When I say that, I just I've just learned so much about myself. Um, and with that being said, I want to kind of move into the um, creative aspect and the business. So I have decided that I'm that I'm ready to fully step into my 
acting and in my comedy, um, I took a six week course, October through December. And then I performed my first comedy showcase, um, December 13th. And it was like the most alive I'd ever felt getting on stage, having those nerves, being anxious, having my five minute set, get, you know, playing with the audience. And I'm like, I need more of this. I need this. Um, it's interesting when I get on stage, I don't ever smoke before I go. I never, I don't smoke weed or anything before I go because um, I, I love the, just being in my full face. I can't, my, in my body, like just that creative spirit. I can't, I can't explain it, but it's beautiful. And I'm going to be writing a one woman comedy show, which I want to perform um, for my 40th birthday, which is coming up in May. So I'm going to rent a theater and I'm going to perform my comedy show. It's working on it every day. And uh, with my acting, I'm signing up for a nine week. I've signed up for a nine week class and I start in February. And um, when it comes to my coaching, so this is, this is how this relates to you, right? You've been a listener to this podcast. Maybe you've wanted to work with me. Maybe you want to do what I do. Maybe you want to step more into your creativity. Maybe you want to be a coach, which I've kind of uh, in a way retired from that, right? So I have a few one-on-one clients, but really my focus right now is acting more comedy. Um, and there are still ways to work with me. So this is just kind of what I want to share depending on um, where you're at in your life. So you can join the real rich community. I'm giving you all this information up front. So it's like, I don't have to wait till the very end. I want to just give you the changes and then really just kind of get into some other amazing stuff that I think is going to help you with your own creativity. And like, if you're feeling stuck, or if you're really feeling like you want to go do something that you haven't given yourself permission to do. So there are two ways that you can work with me. Three, number one is you can join the real rich community. I've made the price very accessible to people. It's now $49 a month, $49 a month. And um, there's one live Q and a, which I run along with the other members. So like I'm hosting a live Q and a, that's where you can come, you can talk, you can pick my brain, you can brainstorm, you can celebrate, connect. It's a, it's a great community for my introverts. It's a great community for my creatives out there. The ones that that really are, are, you know, you're a coach. Maybe you might, a lot of the members right now are coaches, but they have other dreams, right? They're also like podcast hosts. They want to act. They have other desires that they want to allow themselves to expand, not just do one thing. So a lot of my creatives are in that, um, in the community, my introverts, maybe you want to start a business. You just need, you know, you're, you're an actionable human being. Like all you need is just, I have these questions. Give me the answers. I'll go do it. Right. So yes, come. If you've watched my journey, you know that I went from being, I have two masters. I went from being a licensed therapist to a coach to, um, and it's not all like bouncy, bouncy. Everything has melded together. And that's what I'm really like. That's what I'm loving about this transition. It's like, there's nothing separate and nothing in my life is an accident, right? The fact that I got my master's in social work. So that's a therapy. Then I became a coach. Okay. And so I've like started this coaching business. It's been 11 years, went to culinary school. I never really, I never cooked for anyone, but guess what? I'm meal prepping every day. I'm meal prepping. I'm meal prepping for the week once a weekend. Um, so I'm using my chef skills, uh, my TV hosting. Love it. I'm working with now my um, I'm working with CEOs, executives, leaders, uh, managers to be more confident on camera, be more um, authentic in their communication. So I'm doing that. Um, and I have the real rich community where I get to work with people who are just coming up and they want a mentor. So you can join the real rich community for 49 a month. And we have one live Q and a call a month. So I'm really excited about just a lot of the structural changes. Um, and as far as working with me, um, one-on-one, I offer a, uh, like a 75 minute customized session, any topic or a three hour. They're both different price points. There's a PDF that you can download. If you want to learn more, you can just reach out to me on my website. I've kept it super simple. If you want to work with me on your confidence, on your communication and on your cash, period, right? If you want to work on finding ways to monetize you, like, right, I, I get paid in multiple ways right now, right? Through my voiceover, through my acting, through some, through my consulting, through my wedding officiant, right? I have these different parts of me that I love to explore. Um, I don't think everything needs to be monetized. I'll tell you right now, like my cooking doesn't need to be monetized. I cook for myself. The wedding officiant stuff that I do, I love it. It's not like my long-term dream though. Like I do it, it's great. I get to meet people. I get to make some money. It's awesome. It's just fun. It's fun for me right now. You know, I have some dreams that I want to share with you because I really want 
my connection with my audience on this podcast used to be very much me teaching and packaged and like, oh, let me go through this and then give you the lesson. But I want to share some of my dreams with you. We're doing it messy, y'all. I want to be the first South Asian female to win an Oscar. My friend was like, what about Mindy Kaling? I'm like, yeah, Mindy Kaling definitely has a massive head start. Yes, she's definitely going to get that Oscar. But I can dream. I want to be the first South Asian female to win an Oscar. I want to have my own Netflix comedy special. And uh, that's why I'm recording. I'm writing and, and recording my own comedy show because it's like, I don't wait for any anyone come to hand anything to me I'm gonna rent a venue I'm gonna get it filmed I'm gonna put it out there so I'm super excited and like this is how I know I'm in alignment no one I don't feel resistance towards writing my comedy I just I do it when I have a funny joke I write it down I, I keep adding to my one woman show I don't push it but I am very intentional about my comedy like it's like I comedy writing good comedy it, it boils down to the discipline of writing comedy right you got to write every day and I've been writing every day and it's been great and my manuscript for my book has been awesome. I just submitted that to my editor. Um, it's just a lot. I'm sharing all this with you because um, I know I abruptly ended the podcast. And I want to say I'm sorry because I was going through some stuff and I just, I needed some space. I just needed some space and I didn't want to explain. And I, that's what I sent that. I did that last episode and I know you maybe didn't see it coming, but you know, thank you for still being here, you know, and listening. Um, I want to give credit to, the person who's really helped me in the past three months, I think everyone comes into our life for a reason and a season. Clients come into our life. Uh, coaches come into our life, mentors, uh, partners, all this stuff. But I want to thank someone in the past, since October, um, that's really helped me. And that's my, I, I, would, I would call him my, uh, my astrologer, my mentor. Uh, um, and that is Ricky Williams, who is, uh, you know, if you follow football, if you're a football fan or you grew up in a football family, you know that he's a two-time All-American. He's a Heisman Trophy winner. He's a former NFL player, played for the Dolphins, and he left the NFL so he, because he really, um, he liked smoking cannabis. And then he, he chose that. And he realized that a lot of his football career was just something he was good at, but it wasn't necessarily what he wanted to do. It's just what he thought he should do because he was good at football. And I really resonate with that story. I really resonate with Ricky's story because I had a moment the other day, very recently, probably in the past 48 hours where I realized I was so out of alignment. And I go, I think I've been in the wrong profession for 11 years. I've been here coaching other people to be confident, to speak their mind, to go after their dreams, to do their thing. When I really should have been doing that for myself this whole time, I don't regret any of it, but I finally realized like, oh, I'm in the wrong profession. I'm in the wrong profession. Now I'm still consulting, but it's just a different type of energy towards it, right? It's not like this. Um, it's, it's more like you hire me. I get in, I look at your communication. I look at your confidence. I look at your cash. I give you the plan. I, I look at your cash system. I look at all that. We talk about the plan, move one and done, right? It's either a one hour session or a three hour. And so I'm giving myself, instead of filling up my calendar with tons of clients, I'm working a lot smarter with how I want to work with people, um, shorter periods of time. I'm able to look at what's not working and I'm able to look at how do we fix this? And hello, I had to do that with myself, like hardcore. I had to look at where I was still holding on to stories, where I was still holding on to identities, narratives. And I realized I... I, yeah, I, I thought that the way for me to feel the most useful in life or like was to always help others. And I do help others, but I want to help others in a different way. And the way that I want to do that is in a very creative way for me, which is getting on stage and making people laugh and becoming a better actor and delivering a performance that touches people. I want to hone in on that craft. I really do. It's something that's very new for me, but something that I've always been drawn to. Good acting, excellent comedy. People were just being themselves. I realize there's so many parts of me that I don't let anybody see. I'm goofy as hell. I'm so goofy. I have all these different voices that I don't let people, I, I have these parts to myself that I don't let people see that I only get to witness when I'm by myself behind closed doors. I have these parts of me like really goofy. I have so many different characters living inside of me. And I've, I've had to like only allow them out individually one by one, like whoever I'm safe with. So I have like different voices and different personalities, parts of me. And I'm realizing when it comes to acting, when it comes to comedy, I get to harness all that energy and it feels really good. And I'm, I'm feeling, I was talking to my friend, Alison Bird, and I said to her, 
I can be anyone I want to be. I go, that's the most liberating thing I've ever heard. And that's the scariest thing I've ever heard. I have the power to create exactly who I want to be. That's that God energy I'm talking about. I felt it so much yesterday. And I'm like, oh my God, Vasavi, you can literally create who you want to be. And I'm like, okay, who do we want to be? Who do we want to be? Who are we going to allow ourselves to be? And I've really released the judgment, a lot of the judgment. I just, I don't allow myself to talk unkindly to myself anymore. I still push myself. I'm, I'm, I push myself and I'm gentle and I check in and I treat myself with dignity. And it's like, you know, I, I usually I'm like, oh, you got to get all four podcast episodes in, push it in. And I, I, that's what I needed that at the time I needed that from myself. I don't regret anything. Every part of me that I was with myself or with my clients or whoever, I know what people need at the time. I knew what I needed at the time. I don't regret any of it, right? I, I, I change my style according to what you're going through in that moment, you know, because you may not need hard Vasavi in this moment. You may need soft Vasavi. We can, we can tap into different parts of ourselves, And I've been doing that with myself and it, it, it feels really good. It feels really, really good. Um, I've been feeling much more, um, it, it's, I've been spending a lot of time by myself, but in a different way, I spend a lot of time with myself anyway, but I've been spending a lot of time with like questioning and getting curious about like, what else is there? Like, what else is there? What's even better than that? And I owe that a lot to my mentor, Ricky, who always has me ask, how does it get any better than this? You know? And uh, so I've, I've realized, you know, and just, and really incorporating astrology into my life. Cause Ricky, that's how we originally met is that he, He's an astrologer. And um, I got to say, as an Indian born and raised in a very traditional Indian household, Brahmin household with the highest caste, top caste, very pure. You know, uh, I say that with quotes, very pure. You know, we're considered the top caste. Um, I've had a lot of astrologers in my lifetime, all Indian. And Ricky was one of the best astrologers I've ever worked with. I felt like he really got, he really got me. He really got me. He understands the purity and the sanctity of the Indian culture as it applies to astrology, but he's also a Westerner, right? And so am I, I'm, I'm, well, I'm Indian, but I'm also a Westerner. So he was able to bridge both. I really love how much respect he has for the Indian culture. And so that really touched me. Um, so we've been working together and he's great. If you ever want an astrology session with him, you should go to rickywilliams.life um, and or just Google him. I mean, <laughs> he's everywhere, but I feel um, very blessed that I'm able to open up like this and not hesitate so much because I, I do want to, I do want all of you to know that you can change your mind and you can pivot. You can pivot. You can. And you know what? It's not easy. It's not easy. I'm not going to lie to you. This is the scariest thing I've ever had to do. Uh, one of the scariest things. Let me not, let me not get too dramatic. It's been scary letting go of the identity that I've created. Like, Ooh, who am I if I'm no longer a coach? And I actually tried this on for a little bit. I was like, Ooh, I'm a writer. I'm an actor and a comedian. Oh my God. I love the way that feels. I love the way that feels for me. It feels so good for me, you know? So I've just been trying on different ways of being. Um, so I, I, yeah, this is what I'm playing with, right? This is what, oh, I'm sorry about that. This is, what, this is what I'm playing with right now. And it feels really, really good. It feels really good. And um, I'm going to be back with another episode, but I wanted to, I was like, okay, how do I want to do this episode? What do I want to say to the women and men listening? And what I really want you to say is this, okay? What I really want, what, what I really want you to hear is this. <sighs> Spend time with yourself, <laughs> really get to know yourself, really start to own what you want, like own it. You don't need anybody's permission. And I will say I could not have done it without Ricky's help and a little bit of cannabis help too. I did not think that was going to be the trajectory of my life. And I have a feeling I'm going to be honest, this, the cannabis thing is, is a, it's seasonal for me. I can tell that it's like for right now, I need this I need this. In, and I don't mean that in an addict way, like, oh, I need this. It's like, it feels good. My body's calling it. It's like this, like very heavy introspective energy, which feels really grounding. And I don't know if I need this forever. I don't need it forever. It's just a season, right? So really just allowing ourselves to have our seasons and not judging our seasons because there's a season for everything, right? There is a season for everything in life. And 
the permission I'm giving myself is to just let, if, if something's a season, let it be a season, then let it go. Right. Like, Oh, I've been a coach for 11 years. I've been in the business of helping other people. This is what I've done to make a living. This is what I've done to feel on purpose. And now I'm in a place where I'm like, I can still be there for people and I can still help others. But what if I could do it in a way where I'm, I'm bringing so much joy and laughter and emotion in my own craft uh, by developing the craft that I want to develop, which is my acting and my comedy and my writing that I help people in that way. Like for me, the conflict that I had was, is like, is this the only way that I know how to help people is in my business and coaching and all that. And I, and, and, and I'm going to be honest, I'm not completely ready to let go of my business. I'm not because I do still enjoy working with people. And I think that's the thing, giving ourselves permission to be honest with ourselves. Like, I'm not ready to let go fully of my business. I'm not ready to fully immerse myself into acting and comedy. I'm making both work in a way that feels joyful for me. I have select clients. I have select consulting clients that I take. That feels good. And you best believe in my calendar, I have stuff set aside for my acting outreach, my voiceover, my acting classes, my comedy writing. Like I'm working, I'm, I'm, I'm integrating both, but I, I've always put a lot of pressure on myself to be like, oh, I should have this figured out right now. You should, you got to make a decision right now. And I'm like, nope, not going to treat myself that way. And I can see where people might think I'm harsh and you're right. I am. And I've softened up with myself. I have, I, I know a lot of people are drawn to me because some people, some people are drawn to me because they like that direct harsh energy. And some people are like repelled. And what I realized was I was being I was repelled from myself. Like there's this, my very creative spirit, the part that writes comedy, the part that thinks her stuff is funny, the part that can get into a character and learning, learning to get into a character, reading a monologue and, 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 and embodying this and being the characters. This is all new for me. And I'm noticing I have this critical voice inside my head. That's like, what, what, who do you fucking think you are? You're about to be 40. What do you think you're doing? Transitioning from a business that has made you quite a good amount of money over the past 11 years, you're going to, you're going to take voiceover projects. You're going to start submitting yourself to auditions. You're going to do this. You think your shit is funny. No one's going to laugh at your stuff. This is the voice that I have to deal with every day. And you know what? I'm happy that I have that voice because now I can actually look at that voice as like, Oh, you're the reason why I never actually pursued the things that I wanted to do. And I don't hate that voice. I look at that voice and I'm like, how do we work together? What is it that you're really afraid of? Oh, I'm afraid you're not going to be funny. I'm afraid that you're going to, you're going to be ashamed. I'm afraid that people are going to make you feel bad. We got to protect ourselves. That's my critical voice. Doesn't want me to look stupid. It's okay. We're working together. We're working together. My, the voice in my head and I are working together. Um, and it's good. It's the critical voice that I have to, I battle it, but, but this is how I know I'm on the right track, man. I have that critical voice. Who's telling me, who do you think you are? I get up every day. I go to yoga, seven 15. I'm done by eight. I get home by eight, 15, eight 30, make a smoothie. And I sit down and I write comedy for 25 to 35 minutes straight, but I still do it every day. And that's how I know I started crying the other day. Cause I was like, I can't believe it wasn't even how good I am at comedy writing. It was because it, it, it's not, I'm getting, I'm, I'm learning comedy writing. I, I don't even wouldn't say I'm good at it right now. I think I'm good at having, I have great material, but I'm learning. It, I didn't even care about being good at comedy writing. I go, I said to my friend, Nita, I said, I'm scared at how I'm able to discipline myself to sit down and just do this. And I want to do it right? Like I, I want to do it. I want to sit down and write comedy. I want to do it. I've never felt more aligned. There's zero resistance for me. Once I sit down and write, I got to battle my critical voices. I'm not going to lie. I have those voices, but the act of sitting down and writing is easy for me. And that's how I know I'm on the right track because I am stubborn as they come. And when I'm resistant, I'm like nothing. I am stubborn. I'm a Taurus. No one can get through to me, but the fact that I'm sitting down with no resistance to write, is telling me like, okay, I have the resistance once I start writing. <laughs> I have resistance once I actually sit down and start writing. Anyway, my point is this. I'm so excited to be back with this podcast. I, you know, your feedback matters to me. Um, what you have to say about the content of this podcast matters. What I can always promise you is I always have, this is the first 
well, this is the first like full episode where I've talked about the cannabis and the astrology and what I'm doing in my business. And um, I shared a little bit about it on my Instagram story like two weeks ago, but this is it. This is where Vasavi's at right now. She's acting, she's doing comedy. She's taking select clients to do her consulting um, on communication strategy, camera confidence, cash injection. So uh, confidence, communication, and cash. Uh, she has her real rich membership community, which is her way of still being with people who I still want to be connected to my members and people who want to join, who have that creative spirit and they want to know what to do with it. Right. And I'm doing it. I'm leading the way I'm, I always want to be an example for you. Um, so that's, what's happening on that front. And you can always join the community for 49 a month. Um, we have no annual membership, so it's monthly. Try it. If you don't want to cancel, that's it. Don't get billed the next month. You know, it's simple. So yeah, that's where I'm at. I'll be back. Um, I'm going to, I think I'll be doing weekly episodes. I think that'll be good. Um, I'm still, I'm doing this as I go. This is the first time, like, I don't have a clear outline. I do know this. Um, I do know this, uh, that this podcast is, you know, for me, a lot of what I'm going to be teaching inside my book. So I might read a chapter of my book one day here, um, because I do believe the stuff in the book that I have around learning how to talk out loud, your self-talk, your inner dialogue, all of that um, will help you really hone in on finding the truth of what you want and what you desire and giving you the courage to pursue your dreams. So I'm going to actually probably read a few chapters of the book here for you. Um, and then, yeah, what else? I want to talk about mainstream politics, news, and I, I want to share this. Um, I never used to be the kind of person I want to talk about politics and celebrity news and media and sports and all that stuff. But I got to say, I've spent a lot of time inwards and I feel really good about being at one with myself. And I want to use that oneness energy and I want to apply it to what's going on in the world. I feel like there's a lot more divisiveness than there needs to be. I think we need to be, to have extreme polarity, to then come together that I'm speaking from personal experience. It was only because of my own extreme polarity going so far outside of myself that it brought me back to some form of a middle, right? Balance in between, uh, feeling safe in my skin, honoring all the parts of myself. So I want to apply that to how I view the world. That's it. Um, and so, yeah, allowing myself to talk about what I wanted to talk about, say it out loud. And if you've listened this far and you're like, man, I want to be as honest as Vasavi. I want to talk about the shit that really matters to me. I want her help. I want to work on a customized communication strategy, whether it's for your podcast, your content, in your relationships, in your at work, whatever, I, if you have a business or if you work with someone asking for what you want, you know, all the things taking care of yourself. Um, you need to take care of your body to really be optimal and all things that you're doing, right? Like you can't be running on empty, all the things um, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. So that's today's episode. I'm really happy to be back. I'm really happy to be back. I wanted this first episode once again, to not be so teachy like teach, teach, teach. I wanted to build a very, I wanted you to know where I'm at. I want you to feel connected to me. And the way that I know to do that is to share what's going on and be like, this is where I'm at. Hey, not like get right into, Hey, I haven't been around in a month. Um, let me tell you the top five lessons of 2022. Like one, like, no, like, I don't want to do that. I want to just talk, talk about where I'm at. This is a story, bring on some cool guests, do some solo episodes, uh, read some stuff from my book. Uh, let you know when I have some comedy shows coming up. I have one coming up February 3rd uh, this week, actually in Austin, Texas. Um, stay connected to you in this way. And hey, if you are loving this, you want to join the community, join the community. Real Rich, go to vasavikumar.com. You can join the community. If you are a corporate leader, if you're an executive, if you're a CEO, manager, VP, leader listening to this episode, and you're like, I maybe don't want to start a podcast, but if you realize like you want that you need to start being more of you and um, stop holding back. And you know that holding back, what you're saying is stopping you from getting the things that you want in your life. Start by being honest with another human being. So we can you know, schedule a call and maybe see if um, one of those customized strategy sessions would work for you. Um, so you can always go to my website, vasavikumar.com or email me at info, email my assistant, Lucy at info at vasavikumar.com, info at vasavikumar.com. Anyway, I'll be back. Um, we're just going with the folks. I want to say thank you for listening to the Being Human with Philosophy podcast. I'll catch you next time. Love you so much. Bye.